All right, I'm filming anyway. This is uh, how to flush your AC lines. Convert yep. it to 134. Yeah, we're going to convert it to 134. You can see we've already taken some stuff apart. Taking the compressor off. Yeah, taking the compressor off. We put this spinning on here. And uh, this is the low side. That's the high side right there. We're in the process of flushing it. Um, to take the compressor out, you got this little wire. You disconnect that, and then there's actually just uh, four bolts. One, two, three, four. Compressor comes out. You can lift it out at an angle uh, because of the belt, and then uh, compressor. Which, which is helpful when this adjusting bolt is, is frozen in place. Yeah, what he said that adjusting bolt's frozen in place, and the muffler's kind of affecting access to it. But anyway, we took the compressor out. Now you do need to, if you're going to convert it, you do need to bring your car to like an AC shop or something that can properly evacuate the uh, refrigerant out of the car. You don't want to vent that stuff in the atmosphere. Not good to do. Right, Bill? Yeah. Uh, I don't know where the, all the Freon that used to be in here is. It's not there now. Yeah, it's not in there now. So I think this car was already empty, so we didn't have to worry about that. But anyway. The last thing we would do is vent it to the atmosphere. Exactly. We'd never do that. So, anyway, that's the old compressor. Um, Show them how much oil came out of it. Yeah, this, uh, you take this little bolt off, I think it's uh, 17 millimeter, and then put it over a cup or something, you drain oil. There's supposed to be six and a half ounces of oil in there, and that's all we got out. It's less than an ounce. So, but anyway, and you turn the pulley and all that good stuff, you turn the uh, clutch on the pulley. You get out as much as you can. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pour in here. It's supposed to be six and a half ounces of oil. So we're going to pour in roughly that much. Uh, ester oil is what we're going to use. Don't use PAG. Yeah, don't use PAG. Now what Bill's doing is getting some uh, paint thinner ready. Well, mineral spirits. Mineral spirits. Uh, charcoal starter because it's mineral oil. R12 uses mineral oils. So what better to cut mineral oil than mineral spirits? Yeah, what he said. So, anyway, what we did is we put a 5 16th inch hose on the high side. It's going down there into a drain bucket. And uh, Bill's going to pour his mineral spirits into the low side. You're going to pour like a quarter in there at a time. We might end up putting a whole gallon of this stuff in here. There's no such thing as being too clean. Yeah, he, and look at his hands, how clean they are. Cleanest they've been all day. So you're just going to slowly pour that cord in there until... We're flushing backwards from the low side back to the high side, which means we're pushing out of the orifice restriction. So any trash in the system is not getting pushed into the orifice, it's being pushed away from the orifice. Flush it backwards. Because if you flush it from the high side towards the low side, any trash in the system is going to get shoved into the orifice tube. Yeah, what he said. But to do that, that means you have to have compressed air. You, you, uh, if you use the compressor itself to do the flushing, you have to go. You can't reverse the hoses; they, they don't fit right. So you can use the compressor itself to uh, flush it. Because that's the way I used to do it before I had the truck. Show me a picture of the truck. It's yeah, a beautiful truck, yeah. It's got, you even got a welder on this thing. Anyway, I'm supposed to show you a picture of the truck while he's pouring the, uh... Oh yeah, there's a, there's a compressor on here too. Somewhere in there. I don't know where it's at. It might have been it up there. Got some air tanks too. Yeah. So, there he is, got his hose, alright, taking his bath, we already flushed some of it. Why do we have this antenna in our way? Well, don't do that and he'll never come back up. This isn't either of our cars either. Get it on there, get really good pressure. You gotta hold it tight, otherwise it sprays yeah. in your face. It sprays in your face, that's not fun. And now? Hold that thing on there like your hand's gonna fall off if you don't. And it should. No. Let me 
just gonna hold it down so it doesn't go up in anybody's face. And that's it's starting to look good. It's coming out clear. Alright. Probably have to wipe the lens off when we finish this. Yeah. You could do this without this hose. It's just gonna spray all over an engine bay. And, and you end up with a clean engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it would be green or black before. It'd make it dirty and then it'd make it clean. But cleanliness is next to godliness. Yeah, what he said. And we're flushing backwards. That's the key to the whole thing. We're going from the low side back to the high side. So his orifice tube is being flushed out backwards. And he'll never have to change his orifice tube. I, I, I like to flush mine just as a preventive maintenance feature. Because if you're running 134 to do a charge, if you buy the Sam's Club, you're looking at what? About uh, $15? Sam's Club? Yeah. Talking about AutoZone. No, no. Oh, wait, wait. For the, for the, uh, oh, oh, you're talking about three cans of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to take two to three cans to recharge it. And uh, at Big Lots, it's $8, and it's uh, like $5 for Sam's Club. The question isn't why run R134. The question is why not. Yeah, it's cheap. Oh, you caught us filming. Brandon's back. He made a trip to go buy some stuff. We have to cut a tool. We have to ruin a brand new tool because of damn K-Jet. Excuse me. Because of less than optimal K-Jet. Okay, yeah. I'm going to have to let my hands get tired, so... Okay. Move your lens. Take off the timber. Yeah, auto zone's expensive when you need just one tool. All right, come here, Brandon. How strong are you? You gonna let him lose his hand? Yeah. Hold that. Hold that tight. It hurts. Yeah. After a while, your your hand hurts. Very. Yeah. Hold that very tight. He's probably gonna. Like this. Yeah. This is this, and, a, this and is and good he, for a newbie to see to, this. You have to keep your trigger. Uh, so, so keep your trigger. Because he's gonna hurt his hand and it's gonna go oh, missing all over. It's, what? It's, especially your hand's gonna tire. It's gonna spray in your face. Yeah. <laughs> But what we're doing is we're flushing the system out. It's all coming out in one of the parents' buckets. Hey, it's up. There we go. Now he's messing up. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it smells good, too. Not as good as the spray paint he was spraying earlier. That's true. Yeah, spray paint right next to a... Uh, white spray paint right next to a white truck. Oh, oh, it's just there coming out. Oh, this is nice. Look at this. Look coming out in those there. Oh, not coming out. It's just there. Look at that. Pretty. Huh? Pretty. Look pretty. at all black junk that was... Uh, yeah. Is it going to be breathing soon? It depends on how high you want to get. <laughs> we got yeah. some more coming yeah, out. Yeah, I got a little bit there, but... Uh, and any residual paint thinner gets... We're going to vacuum it, of course. And any residual paint thinner that might get left behind is totally compatible with Esther. 100% compatible with Esther. Are you hand tired yet there, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have to let Steve move the lens out of the way. And then we'll... We'll flush it just a little bit further. I can hold it for a little bit. It's most it's mostly air coming out. It's, here, let, go go ahead and there you go. And I'll 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 move it a little bit. We're flushing your system out right now. This is what came out of your system. It's R12. No, it's mostly came out. Uh, any R12 that hits the atmosphere evaporates immediately. But it, in the bucket's what came out. Uh, uh, by the way, that's your parents' rag. <laughs> No, no, it, uh, uh, uh. No, it's paint thinner. Yeah, I won't hit the paint. Paint thinner is very low impact. Yeah. Uh, oh, old man's messing up. Leaking. Good. Smells good. Not as good as that paint you were paint you spraying earlier. Yeah. I got a... All right, so Bill is going to show you how to uh, pull vacuum on AC.
know, you gotta fire up Brandon's car. Fire, fire up the car, Brandon. This is about air conditioning or something, Bill did, wants did, to... Did, did, did you show the cold air coming out the fence? Yeah, I showed the cold air coming out. We have a thermometer. But, but, but it's like, ooh, 134 works. Yeah, it's it's cold, but no one has a... I mean, I figured one of you would have a meat thermometer. Um, and I didn't need to bring one. You don't have a thermometer anywhere in that truck. Uh, gotta love that cage yet. It'll it'll pick up in a minute. It'll pick up in a minute. His is actually running pretty good. The K Jet. My my carburetor car doesn't start like this. Okay. Ah, gotta love that K Jet. Turn on the AC. Running okay. Fire the Actually, yeah, you can. You can see it there. Right here is blowing in the breeze. Well, certain angles you can see it. He's here blowing in the breeze. Yeah, it works. We uh, we blocked off his side vents, so he's got like super power. Come on, he just turned it off. So this is how you vacuum it down. This little fitting here. That is a 134 can tap thread, and that's just a quarter inch bar on that side. So you shove that into that hose there. This is a 134 charging hose. So you thread that. Look at that. Thread that onto your can tap. This side goes on to the low side fitting right there. And then we had to stick this adapter on there so we put the 3 8 bar with the 3 8 bar there to track on it. And you can set the engine stuck on it. Now at idle here, Brandon is only pulling about 14 inches. So what we do is we periodically rev it up. Uh, and that would take it up to about 20 inches. And then, it's, you know, you don't want to sit there revving it forever in the day. You can lay the idle then we periodically rev it up. And we back and get for what, about half hour? Something like that. Yeah. And then it's not optimal, but it's good enough. It works, and you can tell the evidence. Brandon's hair blowing in the breeze. So obviously well, that's a different thing. The blower motor and the refrigerant are two different systems. Yeah, but if it's blowing hot air, you clown, and he's the bad guy. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, he's smiling. Because Brandon's going to be able to drive this car in the summer. Yay! Man, I might mean, actually fix his seats. There's going to be another half to fix his seats. Okay. So he'll actually be able to sit down and drive his car. Mm. I mean, he can sit down right now, but he's going to be sitting down like that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, did you do the how-to on how to change the coolant temp sender? Yeah, kind of, sort of. Um, were you cussing in that one? No. Um, you so were. We're not allowed to cuss on Steve's videos, but um, the coolant temp sender is in there somewhere. Uh, on my car, you have to be careful because it jumps out at you. I mean, it, it, it's yeah, so we got you on video saying that yeah, already. It's so exposed. It's like, please, please don't hit me in the face. Brandon's is in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's in there. So. Oh, we should have taken the video of the um, uh, right. back side of Brandon's engine yeah, cluster. Somewhere. All the bra there it is. Got all brass now. On the back there. Wherever my, there's my middle finger. It's on there. There's, there's, there's little Steel, 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 13 16 is what takes it out. Get rusty. 